Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to do something a little different this week. I want to use some native commands, primarily the sandbox tools, to create something that it wasn't maybe necessarily made to create. Uh, specifically, I want to make a bag of chips, or crisps as they're called elsewhere in the world. I know that because I'm worldly. So what I want to do is I want to use tools like the sandbox tools, the move tool, uh, those sorts of things, native SketchUp Pro commands, and we're going to model a bag of chips. As I was putting this video together, I thought, you know, it's pretty cool to, to go through that workflow and see how to do that, but what might be even more fun is to do that once with the native commands and then again using extensions. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to model this bag of chips using native commands, and then I'm going to come back in the next video and model this bag of chips, different from this one, this bag of chips using extensions. So we'll get to see the difference. How can I use the native commands to model versus how do I use extensions? So it'll be two videos, but uh, it'll be pretty cool to see how the two different workflows stack up. So let's jump right in and look at using SketchUp Pro native commands to model a bag of chips. All right, so first thing I got here is uh, I'm gonna unfortunately remove Stacy. Sorry, bye Stacy. And I'm going to draw a grid using sandbox tools. I have the sandbox tools toolbar on here. So I'm gonna start by using the grid command to put in a grid that represents a rectangle that's going to be my bag of chips. So I have a one foot grid spacing and I know I'm being arbitrary yet again by just drawing a shape. There's my rectangle that's going to represent my bag of chips but uh, I can scale it afterwards um, if I want to make it smaller. Alright so there we go. There's my grid. If I double click to enter the grid I can now grab my smooth tool and what smooth is going to allow me to do is I have a radius down lower right corner you can see it says four foot right now and it's gonna let me pick a spot in the model and you can see I'm holding down my, my my left mouse button right now and as I drag up and down the vertices closest to where I clicked move the most and the other ones move less so and you can actually see this is indicated by the little yellow dots there the big dots are gonna move a lot the uh, pale dots, the little tinier dots, are going to move less. So this is a great command to do things like put a bulge into this geometry. I'm going to go set this to a bigger uh, cursor. I'm going to jump up to maybe 8 feet and I'm going to go ahead and click and drag upward. I'm going to come up here again. I'm going to come up. What, I, what I'm trying to do here is just kind of get a little bit of loft in the entire shape. Um, whoop, that's a little much probably. That's overfilled bag of chips right there. What I'm trying not to do is I'm trying not to get too much loft towards the edges. I want to get the bulge really in the middle and not so much around the edges. You can see I have a little bit of a little step up on the sides here. That's okay. We'll come back and fix that. But what I'm really looking for is to put the, the bulk of that uh, curve in the middle of my shape. This looks okay right now, but uh, obviously that's not going to work as a bag of chips. It looks like somebody stuck a baseball inside of a chip bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a smaller cursor. So rather than 8 foot, I'm going to drop down to 4 feet. And uh, maybe I'll take this down a little bit. Um, you know, try to make it a little less normal of a shape to make it look like there's multiple things inside there and not just one big thing. There we go. Maybe I'll push down, pull up. At this point, it's just kind of kind of molding. I'm kind of just creating an irregular shape. All right. That looks pretty good. That's... Uh, I would buy that as a half a bag of chips. So next thing I want to do is, like I said, I did do a little distortion here. I kind of made my edges come up. Obviously, that's not going to work. If this is half a bag of chips. It's going to need to perfectly align with the other half of the bag of chips. Otherwise, the chips are going to fall out of the bag, and that can't happen. What I can do is I could use move to align these lines, but I'm going to actually use a sandbox tool command to come in here and click on points and when I click on a point, a vertex, because it's a sandbox tools, I can only move vertically. The sandbox tools are intended primarily, there's modifier keys in there, but the main function is to move vertically because that's the way landscaping generally works. You bring surfaces upwards towards the camera to create landscape. Um, so this is nice. This is a nice tool over move because I don't have to anything to constrain. I can just move to that last point and when I click, I'm assured that vertically these points are now all aligned across the bottom here. So I say I'm assured that that's true, but how do I verify that? How do I check? A great way to do it is using my style. So over here in my styles menu, under the edges tab, 
I can change my color from all the same to by axes. And that's going to color code my lines. So you can see here these lines that are running now parallel to the red axes are turned red. The ones that are parallel to the green axes are turned green. Simple color coding makes sense, right? So as I'm doing this, as I drag each line, you can see once it lines up, it automatically changes color. So it's a great way to verify that uh, I'm actually putting this in the right spot. Now this is a uh, this is not the most fun modeling technique in the world, but it is pretty simple. It's a little time consuming, but it's a click click for each side. Uh, not a ton of work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spare you all the clicks, and I'm going to do this super fast. I'm, I'm going to do this so fast that you will not believe your eyes. You're going to insist that I did something like uh, a little video editing to make this happen. And there we go. So that half a bag of chips is now ready to be joined with the other half. I'm not going to go through and model another half. What I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to take this one and I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to use move and the modifier key to bring it over here. Now I'm just going to use the handles on the move box. When I have a group selected, it automatically gives me these handles. Click on this one on the right, and I'm just going to flip it over 180 degrees. Then I'm going to move it from one of these corners to this corner right here, and I have my chip bag is coming together. To make this all weld together, I'm just going to select both groups, right click, and explode. And that's automatically going to weld everything together. I can double check, double check that by triple clicking on any geometry. If the whole thing lights up, then I know it's joined together. All right, this is looking pretty good. Couple things I want to fix. One is it's inside out. So I'm going to right click while it's all triple clicked, while it's all selected, and say reverse faces. The other thing I want to look at is these edges. If I look at a bag of chips, the bulge here in the middle kind of makes the material pull in on the side. So it's not actually a perfect rectangle if I look down on it. So I want to do that. I want to, I'm going to use the select command to just select a bunch of these lines on the edge. And then I'm just going to use the move command to slide it in near that next course, that next, this next uh, set of lines. And I'm going to grab the next set, maybe something like that, and do the same thing again, slide it in again. So what this is going to give us is, if we look at it from the side, it's giving us that bulge of the bag there. This is not so natural looking. This doesn't look as, uh, these steps look a little awkward. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to use the move command. Just straight up regular move, nothing selected. If nothing is selected, I can hover over a point, click, and just drag that in. So you don't even have to worry about like hitting a, a key or anything like that because when I look straight down from above, it's going to naturally, as I move the cursor, align to that red axis. So it's real quick and easy to just, as long as I'm looking at it from above, click and drag. I can see my, my dotted lines following my cursor is uh, the red color. That's good. Um, but it's real easy to move those out. I might want to add a little more ir irregularity here. Maybe I'll grab this section right here and kind of pull it out a little bit. Um, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Not exactly the same, but similar process on the right side. Grab a bunch of lines, slide them in. Um, maybe this time I'll do something like just grab this section and slide it in to give me, again, irregularity. And then uh, a little bit of cleanup with the move command. Just slide some of these vertices in, just so I have not quite so blocky a shape is what I'm looking for. All right, and that, that, looks, that looks pretty good. That looks like uh, it could be mistaken for a bag of chips if you didn't know better. All right, I'm going to turn off by axes. And then I'm going to triple click on the whole thing again and I'm going to toggle Soften Coplanar and get that looking. That looks nice. What I might want to do here is mess with my uh, smoothing angle here to decide how far, where, where do I want that to be. I want to get it just enough so that my lines kind of disappear where this bulge on the side is. Hey, that's looking pretty cool. I'm going to triple click and make that a group. And one last step is uh, I'm going to need some graphics on this bag of chips. I'm going to slide it up just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw a rectangle on the ground underneath my bag of chips. And those of you who have watched our Skill Builder videos before know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a projected texture and put it up on the bag by going to File, Import, 
I'm going to import my artwork for this bag of chips. I'm going to place it on this rectangle. I'm going to stretch it up like this. Then right click, texture, projected. And now I can come into the bag and I can say paint bucket tool, sample that projected texture, put it on the bag. And there we go. I am done. I now have a bag of natively created sketch chips. So that's the first video. That is what's going to cover all those tools, those native tools, and making that geometry. Next video around, we're going to do the exact same thing, well, a very similar thing, to create this bag of chips, which is different from that bag of chips, because this one will be created using extensions. So how'd that go for you? Were you able to follow along? Did you enjoy learning something? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, while you're there, go ahead and give us a like and maybe even subscribe. We like making these videos, but they're a lot more effective when you get something out of them. So if there's something you want to see in a future Skill Builder video, let us know. Thank you.